Hey y'all, insight number three, we're in Marina chapter three now. You're thinking, oh, we have to go to chapters one through six. It's literally like a page and a half. He's got such little space to write that he condenses it and makes it really good. But he's writing about church administrative things while he's on the run. Think about why that's important. But here we're talking about um, elders ordained priests and teachers by the laying on of hands. Now, priest here isn't referring to the office of a priest like those young men that bless the sacrament like we have now where they're the you know the ironic priesthood office of a priest um what it's referring to is one who connects others with christ that's what it's referring to uh as far as language goes there so keep that in mind when you're reading it um so he says you know the the man in which the disciples who were called the elders of the church ordained priests and teachers so this is how those who are the elders. So those who are now, we would call them the quorum of the twelve and the first presidency. This is how they ordained other people to callings, which includes any calling that we get. This specifically talks about priesthood ordination, but it can apply to all the callings that happen from whatever leader calls you. Yeah, okay. Um, after they had prayed unto the Father in the name of Christ, they laid their hands upon them and said, so they have a prayer first before they come and ordain anyone. And if you've ever asked for a blessing, sometimes the prayer happens because the blessing's in a hurry. Sometimes the prayer happens on the way from getting the oil to the person or the blessing happens. I know I had one from my previous father-in-law that happened on his drive down to my house, which was literally just a block away, but he wasn't even going to walk. He's like, I'm getting in the van now. And he had a prayer on the way because I was like, we, the ambulance was on its way. So he just, you know, that's what he did. And husband at the time was an absolute mess and couldn't do it. Um, which, poor sweet thing. But uh, it just, <laughs> so sometimes those prayers, but they have a prayer first. Now, if you know you're going to go in and do one, you can take your time. Sometimes they, you can't. So again, keep yourself ready all the time, right? Which goes back to my... But I said a few weeks ago, I'm doing something for Relief Society for Christmas. Actually, I think I'll probably do it in Sunday school. Carry the oil. Carry it. Part of your responsibility as a priesthood holder, carry oil. But as sisters, we can also carry oil. Because especially as temple endowed sisters, while we don't give the blessings, we can certainly be part of supporting those that do. Absolutely. Okay, so um, they say... Big diversion. Anyway, uh, uh, they lay their hands on it. In the name of Christ, I ordain you to be a priest, or if you be a teacher, I ordain you to be a teacher. Again, not the office of a teacher, but like a teacher. Um, to preach or like a missionary. Uh, to preach repentance and remission of sins through Jesus Christ by the endurance of faith and on his name to the end. Amen. And after this manner, they did, did they ordain priests and teachers according to the gifts and callings of God unto men. And they ordained them by the power of the Holy Ghost, which was in them. So by the gifts and power of the callings of God unto men. So whatever gift you have, whatever ability or strength, or we can talk about foreordained um, for some of the bigger callings. I don't think I was foreordained ever to be a primary president or to be on the Relief Society president, but I think I was foreordained to teach. And I resisted that for a long time, and teaching scared me. Um, I didn't think I was mighty in words of speech, like Moroni said he was. Uh, I felt probably a little more like Noah or Moses, where I was like, oh, no one's going to listen to me, and why would they, and I don't have words to string together. I'm a writer. I'll write the speech someone else can give it. Uh, and yet, no. Once I started embracing it, and it was all over when COVID hit, and I was teaching before then. I'd started teaching and started practicing. It was a slow process, but I wanted to give it a go. Uh, it was something I did want to embrace. It's in my patriarchal blessing, and I did want to, you know, it's a gift I've been given, apparently. I don't feel very gifted in it, but I wanted to make it better. I wanted to give that a go as part of trying to get closer to Christ and, um, improve that relationship which it really has and has led to some absolute beautiful experiences and I have made so many good friends through teaching um so really awesome anyway okay so yeah priest here is not the office of the priest neither is teacher it's just like one who connects one with Christ one who teaches others um whether it be missionaries bishops 
well, that's what we call them now. That's not what they had then. Um, it's a different, like the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is more structural because of the nature of the international way of it. Um, the church then, same church, same gospel, but they only had to worry about their communities or their cities and they knew where all they were, all of them were. It was like one stake or two stakes, you know, kind of thing. So it's a little different, but you get the idea. Um, so although this is the ordination of priesthood, what can we learn from these words? So this is specific priesthood ordination or calling, but it applies to all callings. So how do they apply to us also? So when I was called to teach Sunday school, I had, I was set apart to do so. When I was called to be on the ward Really, society presidency, I was set apart to do so. Now, I was set apart by a priesthood holder who gave me that blessing um, and blessed me with the things that I would need and the things I needed to be aware of and learn while I was in this calling. Now, I can either take that and go with it and do my best with it, or I can kind of ignore that and go, oh, that was nice, and walk out the door. I choose the first one, um, and I'm far from perfect at any of it, but I give it a go. And what that does, though, is why I'm in that calling a time release from that I have access to priesthood power to do those things that are required of me in that calling um, so while I don't give priesthood blessings I still have access to priesthood power that's the difference so they apply to us just like they apply to those who hold the priesthood um, we might not be holders of it as women but we have access to it. And, you know, quite honestly, I don't want to hold it. I've got enough to do, and I have enough responsibility. I know some women want to. Um, I think they're kind of missing. And don't even get me started on those who say, oh, but you get to have children. It's like, uh, no, 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 that's a whole other thing. Thank you very much. Um, that is not it. And it just... It's, again, you've got to have that relationship with Christ to realize it. I, I always sort of wondered why it was just men. Um, but I think it helps in their... This is just me speaking. Just me. Um, I think it helps in their relationship with Christ because they're not naturally attuned to humble themselves and be closer to Christ. And I think um, a female energy, however you identify, um, just allows that. Like, it seems to be more... Um, easy to to have that why, which is why there are so many faithful women um, or again however you identify um, I'm, I, I'm not trying to put down on anyone there but yeah just that, that female energy or that female um, way of being seems to bring us closer to Christ naturally again just me talking no gospel precedence okay but according to the gifts and callings of God, what gifts have you draw, have you grown and developed through callings? I know, right? Again, me teaching. Could have done this, like, prior to COVID. And then the first one I did, I was like, oh my gosh, you want to go back and look at the early stuff? It's terrible. And, and like, you know, if I'm still doing this in 10 years, I'm going to look back at this and going, oh, you know, right? So it's constant improvement. Um, even now, I look, I don't, I don't watch myself. I, like, I can't watch these back. I, I teach it. I talk you find it interesting I'm really happy for you but I'm like I, I'm one of those people that you know there's actresses and actors that can't watch their own movies because they're just cringeworthy I'm like sometimes I'll watch just to make sure that what I said was right if it's particularly doctrinal um but usually mm. okay so what gifts have you grown and developed through callings you've had and what would you like to grow and develop because do it through the calling you've got listen to those when you're set apart those blessings that you're given and what can you grow in that through that priesthood power and the access you have while you're in that calling what can you grow and develop i i honestly so many friends through teaching the ability and the confidence to just talk and not be worried about like how to facilitate a classroom of people no matter how big it is um i could quite easily get up and give a talk in sacrament now I could speak at, I don't know, that general conference that might still worry me a little, and I think that's a good thing. Um, but I, I think I could do it. It would just, I'd have to really be careful. I might go over the words a million times, you know. <laughs> yeah. But it just gave me that confidence anyway. So think of some of those things. That's Moroni chapter 3. So, yeah. Hang around. We're going to go over to chapter 4. I'll see you there. Actually, 4 and 5 together. Sacrament prayers. I'll see you there.